the, the a recurring film that keeps coming up over the years in this podcast, if you do get a chance to listen to more, is Stranger Than Paradise. Mm. So it's just kind of a coincidence because those early Jarmish films, I just stumbled upon them accidentally as a kid who, and when I say kid, we're rough, I'm a couple years older than you are. But um, Well, I was a kid when I made it. You were it to, literally yeah, so, a kid. Yeah. You, yeah. Well, you were barely out of your teens, right? I mean, I wasn't out of my teens. Yeah, I you was still sixteen when we did the first part, and seventeen when we did the the rest of it. Yeah. Oh, so oh, he shot it. In he two shot different the first times. half hour as a separate <laughs> short film. Oh, and that's then right. Got the money to. I do remember it. that it was just called Paradise then, or Strange, or what was it called? Um, he was. It was intended as a uh, right the first. Second. Yeah, I can't remember what it was called. It well, made, but it was a short film. Yeah. At first, but he intended it, I think, as a longer, and he raised the money. But there was like a year gap in between, at least, if not more. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, okay. I that's good to know. So strangely, lately, it seems like you know this this film keeps kind of reentering into my my sphere of really how. Yeah. Um, well, I mentioned it on the show with the Carol show or some some show in my intro. You would have heard that though. No, so maybe the, it was a different show. Yeah. Oh, it was a different show because. Uh, I think I did one recently with this filmmaker, Allison Bagmill, and the reason I mention is because Tara Culp, who is our... Right, mutual friend. Mutual yeah. friend. Uh, she actually um, heard it and then said, oh, you know, I know Esther. Oh, that's great. I'll hook you guys up. So thanks to Tara for that, too. Yes, thanks, and Tara. And I'm really glad. It was very exciting, the idea. Like, I didn't know, oh, or I didn't know you were here. I didn't know. And then I, I guess I, I realized then... Oh, you're the same actress as was on that arc on Louie. Mm-hmm. But I didn't put that together at the time when I saw you on that originally. Great. I love that. I didn't realize you were the girl. From, you What was the character's name in, in Strange Heart? Ava. It's Ava, yeah, of course. Yeah. Ava. How yeah. I forget? Uh, uh, so you didn't recognize me. That's kind of great in a way. Well, I don't remember the last time I saw it. was a long time I watched ago. it again just the other day because I have the Criterion mm-hmm. uh, 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 version of, of Strange in Paradise. So, uh, yeah. And then... Um, I also recently, last year, spoke to Tom DeSillo, yeah. who was this, you know, the DP on yeah. the film and who has a role. You, in fact, you're in a scene with him uh, in the film. And um, do I? I can't remember that at the airport. Uh, oh, don't oh you? yeah, 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 yes, uh, exactly. The end, right? Yep, your your second good, to last. Good one. Scene. Yeah, you got me there. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, right. Well, since you knew him already, you were obviously in every moment of the film. You were. Hanging out with him on some level, right? Of course, yeah. So, and so, he, his so, visual co- co- contribution to that movie is pretty huge. I yeah. mean, that's the look of yeah. I, I mean, love the I love his commentary, and you know, I've spoke to him recently because I've been. He has this new film. It's very different. It's a. It's a. I guess you could call it a, a personal. It, well, it's a documentary of sorts. You know, he's like a, just finding himself in this very frustrating place where. He wants to make smaller films, but it's almost impossible to get the money for small films. You have to make bigger films, and then you have to hire or cast big, huge names, and then you lose control of the film. So he's sort of caught in this... Uh, a lot of people are, I think. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that's the frustration he's dealing with. So he made this thing just because he had this urge to do something real creative, and there's that. And then, in this part, I'm divulging to you also, because I immediately feel like I can trust you, Esther. <laughs> Good. Not that I have any. No, no, no. This is not really like high security stuff, but. Oh, too um, bad. Yeah, a little bit. If you know who I'm going to talk about next, uh, the next one in this uh, film that I've been in touch with recently is 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 sort of quasi MIA. John, do you tweet? Um, I twit. Yes, you twit? Uh, occasionally, and I know he's on Twitter. He is, and on he has there. very funny tweets. Yes, so that's his way. Yeah. It's connecting to the world in yeah. at large. I I'm, I'm think I'm not going to be comfortable talking about him. On, no, we don't need to. On, on the record. On I'm just going to say that. I understand that. I'm only going to say that. Um, Except to say that I love him and mm-hmm. wish him well. And he's a very talented guy. Exactly. That's all that needs to be said. Be- I, I tweeted with him um, and I just said, you know, consider talking to me for, on the podcast. Mm-hmm. And uh, Good luck. Can, oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's been a journey, regardless. So it's okay. But he, no, we got on Skype and uh, we had a really, really long talk. And you know, it's a mixture of of like his, um, him, him. You know, with his uh, concerns, of course. Let's put it that way. And then, but also, to, like you could, ha- I could have a conversation with him, which was really relief. You know, mm-hmm, I'm glad mm-hmm. to know. Um, and then there were things that he said. He, he was vetting me 
basically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then um, it's been a while, and then we've been ma- emailing back and forth again. And it, I don't know if it'll happen, but you know, I do. I did kind of uh, enjoy the conversation we had. And uh, you know, he said these are things I can talk about. And these are things I can't talk about. I said that's fine. You know, I'll give I'd, you maybe some advice after we're off. Sure. Spe- off microphones. Got it. Um, so we'll see. You know, I wonder if I should get a release, though. <laughs> if I, you know, if, is that where, you, where you're going? Okay. Because I never had a really, kind of, yeah. You know. But I, and I don't have any problem with him hearing it ahead of time. Like what I do. Because, and that's not something I would normally extend, but it's not normally right, yeah. something I need to extend. Yeah. Why? Because we're talking. But, well, good luck. He's be, he has got a great sense of humor and smart, so. Yeah, right. And and I hope his health is good. And all yeah. That. That's all. Um and then, uh, so I, so it started to occur to me. Well, it would be kind of nice to get a couple of people from the film, and and then hopefully, I've always wanted Jim Jarmusch on, of course. Uh, so, have you tried? Um, only, He's hard, apparently. Yeah, for I, these kinds of things. Yeah, I would imagine that would be the case. So, but you know, I'm building up my own thing. I mean, he, I have. Uh, he's like one of the guys. He hasn't even done the Mark Mark Maron's podcast, which he's yep. gotten just about everybody else. Like you know, from yeah. And then I guess finally Richard, which I don't have. Uh, I haven't really had. It. Although he did. Uh, uh, I I can help you there. Oh, that'd be want. nice. Sure. I'm a um, little bit in touch with him once in a while, once yeah. in a blue moon. That yeah, that'd be great. So you know, we'll see what happens. It's, for me and for I think the people that listen to the podcast, they probably enjoy just even just you know this is great. And I'm, I I mean, as far as I'm concerned. Price of admission. Everything oh. is, I'm, I'm very happy that. Good. And having viewed it again, I was really taken with your your performance. Thank uh, you. In 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 that film, as well as on on Louis ser- on the series. I know you're a musician. Yep. It's primarily what I've been doing for the last chunk of my life, aside from raising a kid. How did, so? Yeah. Uh, and what is your? Are you playing? What was it? A ch- is this a stringed instrument? I think it was a. Was it a? Am well, right? it's the or exotic instrument of a violin. Very <laughs> exotic. Yeah. Um, maybe you've heard of it. And uh, I also... It's s- very obscure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I sing... I wish I could say something a lot cooler and more exotic, something like mm-hmm. the theremin, but I don't... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I write songs. I play guitar. I sing. So, you know, I do... And I where do you okay? And do you or do you play with um, a, uh, a a small ensemble band? Or yeah, a band or? I um, mm-hmm. I just put a record out, which if you haven't heard, I'll I'll send you the link oh, to. It's that. gotten some really great. Can reviews. I download that? Is that how we would? Yeah, do it? that'd be great. I can play a, it during the show. Yeah, there, I can play it like in. That the, would be great because that's really what I've been doing. And actually, sure. my last record is very recent, so it's oh, still. Cool, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, that, is that? that uh, is that Hungarian? French. <laughs> Kidding. Um, and uh, yeah, I've I'm really happy with this last one. Somehow. Oh great! And how many have you um, made? If I three, can, how many out three albums? And there, but there was a really long break between my second and mm-hmm. this last one because, well, I mean, among many other reasons. You raised creature a creature called Gus. Yeah, Gus got in a, between. Is that me short and my for record. Augustus or August? August. Uh huh. Was he born in August? No, everybody asks that. In September. But <laughs> yeah, it would have been obvi- a little odder to call him sep- sep- September. Hey, Sept. Right. Yeah. Uh, but he goes by Gus. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so I was really His busy His birthday's with in him. September, though? Yeah. What day? 22nd. Oh, my birthday's this September 24th. That's really? Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think Jacob's, my son's sister, is September 20th. Might be September 22nd, too. Really? His sister. When is six. your son's birthday? May... Uh, for make sure I get this right. <laughs> May fourteenth, and he's twelve. He's turning twelve this he's May. Turning so twelve, okay. Th- three gotcha. months, yeah. Gotcha. Two, gotcha. two. So he's two. in seventh grade or sixth Six. grade? Sixth grade. Right. And, and right. What about yeah. what about your what about Gus? He's in seventh, okay. but he's like one of the younger. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh yeah, because my kid was younger too, though. So yeah. Anyway, so 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 you've been you raised a child, and uh, but music is other than that big break music is sort of what i've been doing for the past 10 15 years yeah is it um 15 even though your so. your primary instrument well you play different instruments as you've yeah. already said but so violin yeah that goes back to my childhood yes mm-hmm. that is sort of my primary instrument so and because speak. you said you sang i'm assuming that this, since there are lyrics that these are fairly are they 
fairly conventional. That almost sounds like an insult, but it's not how I intended. I mean, more traditional, structured or crafted songs, or are they? I wouldn't necessarily go that far. You listen to it, yes. You know what I mean, in like some, verse, yes. verse, chorus. Yes, that kind of in thing. some ways they are just regular songs. In another way, they are a little. Mm-hmm. I hate this word, but quirky probably Mm -hmm. yeah it's any description is always feels like you're limiting or you're going to say to some part of the population this song isn't for you or these yeah so no matter how you describe and actually that and you know what it sounds really pompous for me to say this but that's not my experience when i've i mean i've not had the it's really hard right now in in the music world and so i have not had the methodology of reaching a really large audience Mm -hmm. in my music career but when I perform my songs or people hear them my experience is they actually reach a lot of different kinds of people yeah no I mean I think once somebody actually hears the music yeah and it comes from a place of authenticity and yeah. soul yeah. fullness, yeah. and then That's then the right then you you know then people that connect have, to that right of course yeah. and that's, and that's right. my experience and I think that soulfulness is sort of in there I mean that's not me saying so sounds really tacky but so I've been told <laughs> <laughs> hearsay <laughs> yeah um, but also since I think it was in the last two years that the Lucy K thing yes, happened so how did that recent. come about um, well we. I think the simplest way to s- explain it is we were parents at the same school. Okay, that I is simple. I believe he is... We also have a few mutual friends, m- mostly through the school. Um, I believe he is familiar with m- my work in Stranger. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he was thinking about me for a role. And he actually came out and saw me perform uh, my songs and approached me. And... And it made you an offer you really couldn't refuse. That's right. And I hadn't acted in a really long... And that's exactly it, because I actually was taken aback. I wasn't planning to act again, Mm -hmm. and I hadn't done it in a long time. I was scared shitless. Excuse me, can we curse on this podcast? Fuck no. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And and also the idea of revisiting somebody from another country... was a mixed thing for me because I had been associated with that for so long um, that frankly became kind of boring to me after a while to be associated with that. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of reasons for me to be hesitant. Mm -hmm. But first of all, I love him and his show. Yeah. There were only uh, like a thousand or two or 10,000 actresses in line ready for you to... (laughs) Not take the role. It's not yeah, like... Yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, but the other thing was that when I went and read with him, I read the script. And it was kind of brilliant. Oh, and I was like, this is an offer I, this is an offer I can't mm-hmm. refuse. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, Because he really is a great writer. Yeah, he's a great writer. Yeah, it certainly... If you're listening, season four. Yes. Uh, there's the arc where Louis helps an older woman stuck in an elevator... And uh, your her niece was it? Or That's right. Her niece yep. who's visiting, right? You yep. have children or child at in Hungary. Yep. That and you're planning returning, and yes. against your better judgment, you allowed your Louis to seduce you. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great storyline, so people should seek it out. I th- I know it's on Netflix. So yeah. You can stream it. But you know, it was he actually when I read with him, he had me read all the. It was really interesting. He had me read all the characters in the entire season script uh, up to like, I don't know. Really? Yeah. But from the first one, which I, my character isn't even in. Mm-hmm. So I read with him through that. And right away, that first, I think it was like the first, um, or maybe it was maybe it was just the elevator sequence. I might be getting this wrong, but it was the scene that had nothing to do with my character and it was like the first scene we read through. It was the subway scene where the two girls mm-hmm. are getting the big talk about what to do if, if you know, somebody gets off. Oh, yeah. And it was the, actually and a really... the younger ex- one steps off. Yes, and it was yeah. a terrifying scene. And reading that scene, I was just like, oh, that, that was the moment when I was reading that scene that I was going, oh, I'm, I got to do this. Mm-hmm. This is too good. I've mm-hmm. had that conversation a thousand times with my kid. It was like... Were you in my brain? And when you wrote this, it's just like so real and yeah. utterly familiar. And I never need to have that because I 
I handcuff myself to my son on the subway. That's good. So there's no, there's no. <laughs> There'll uh, be a, another kind of price to pay for that, down, but that's down the line. And the, you're paying oh yeah, for no, the, there, there's going to be quite a an invoice coming in at some point. Yeah, for the therapy sessions. Yeah, you know. exactly. But but you know we're all doomed with that anyway. We are so. one, 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 <laughs> one way one, or another. One way or another, we're all we're exactly. all going to screw up our children. That's the law. Yeah. It's only this country where we make such mac. We you know we put ourselves through such. Paces yep. about it, you know. Well, anyways, people should check that out again for sure because it's such a great, a great story. And, and for God's sake, Ellen Burstyn, who I know my favorite, is in there. And um, I came close actually to once having her on. I think I gotta keep get back to that. I was hoping you were gonna say at this point. Oh, I, I'll help you with that as well. Oh <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry. I, I probably can't. I mean, I'm maybe I don't know. I'm She's only, lovely. Yeah. I I think you. It's only a matter of time. Well, you fared really well so far, right? So, yeah, so I'm, I'm not unhappy with it, and I, I just like to craft the kind of shows I want. And I do save a lot of spaces for young, emerging actors and filmmakers right. because that's a large part of what that's I great. Do. And like, I'm because we don't need another podcast that's just like the top of the top. No, right? That's, no, yeah. and 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 actually, most I think the largest part of my audience really are people that are in the industry. Mm-hmm. You know, films that are more considered independent or a festival or art house, you know, and um, so going back in that tradition, Stranger Than Paradise is like one of those iconic films, you know. Yeah. Speaking of that, how did that film come about? So to the best of my recollection, it was a very long time ago. <laughs> well, the film came out in 1984, right? Um, or, it was, or, it was, or it was... Yeah, that sounds about maybe right. Maybe it was in the festivals in 84. And yeah. It came out theatrically in 85. So... That Something sounds like that. just right. Um, so I grew up as part of a theater group. I, my father was one of the founders of a theater group called Squat Theater. Well, this was in, in, in Budapest? Well, it started in Budapest, and then we left when I was 10 okay. with my mother and father and a whole bunch of other adults who were the part of this collective. Oh, right, the troupe. And, yep. Mm-hmm. And we lived in France for a year, and then we settled on West 23rd Street next to the Chelsea Hotel. And it became kind of a cultural hip place for a lot of people to hang out at, not just for the performances that we put on, but it was also a music menu Mm -hmm. at various times when we weren't putting on plays. And so I think Jim Jarmusch probably came by there a Mm -hmm. good number of times. His early band may have even performed there. I can't say that for sure, but it's possible. Mm -hmm. Um, He was in a band back yeah, then. Yeah, I heard about that. Um, so that is probably one way. Now, another thing is I was really close to John back then, mm-hmm. um, who was older than me, but he he actually also t- did a performance of his own at Squat Theater, and then he formed the Lounge Lizards, and their first show, I believe, was at Squat. And they the Squat was like their rehearsal space, and mm-hmm. the, it was one of the venues where they played most regularly. So he knew me really well and I don't know if it was Jim's idea or John's idea to have me play this character but somehow J- my friendship with John had a component in me being in the mix because I knew him better than I knew Jim so that's pretty much it mm-hmm. I don't know the exact like moment that I got right. cast but it was yeah Jim had probably seen me in a play at squat and had seen me around it was a there. multi sort of a multi-discipline space Sounds like music and yes, but and the but Squat Theater had their own thea- <laughs> like avant garde theater, which they put on shows and won some Obie awards and was a pretty uh, visionary theater mm-hmm. group. And um, that apartment, where was that? The uh, the, the, the the building, the, the first p- chapter. Oh, the, the was, was uh, shot in uh, what John plays a. Uh, 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 I What's in the name? Richards, <laughs> <laughs> quoting Shakespeare. <laughs> well, I remember the Richards part was Eddie. Yep. And um, Willie. Willie. There you go. Uh, so John plays Willie, and uh, it's his apartment, and you play Ava, who's like in from Hungary. And, and yep. I mean, most people know this, but I'm going to help my audience yeah. if they haven't been seen it recently. Yeah. That um, giving them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, and you know you're visiting. You show up with your suitcase in hand. Yep. And at his doorstep, and uh, and you crash there for a few days before your trip to Cleveland, where you're going to live. Um, uh, that's right. I think right? with my aunt. With your aunt, right? With yeah. both of your aunt because you're his yes, cousins. That's right? right. That's right. Right. Uh, and um, 
So, and you were saying, I'm sorry, the, that apartment? Oh, oh, you were asking about that apartment? It. I'm just, yeah. it was on 2nd Avenue, and I think it was a mutual friend's apartment that mm-hmm. we rented at or borrowed. Right. Those Back in those days, renting yeah. like <laughs> five bucks a day or whatever. <laughs> Which went uh, further. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. um, and... Uh, yeah, we we shot it, but but you know, and there were some exterior shots. Do you, do you remember the exterior shots of the neighborhood? Yeah, but like sure. on Bowery, and yeah. I mean that to me is one of the most incredible things about the movie. I haven't seen it in a really really long time, but the last time I saw it, that's almost what blew me away the most. It's like wow, that is what New York used to look like. There were lots of like empty like blocks that were just abandoned buildings and yep. the east side, the Lower East Side slash East Village was, uh, and it was rough. And the Bowery, just yeah. unrecognizable. Yeah. Well, the Bowery. Us. Yeah, I remember when I was a kid and we would drive in. My family, I lived in Queens at the time, and I, my parents would drive in because they were members of the public theater, you know, on Lafayette, mm-hmm. just around the corner from the Bowery. And they were uh, kind of like nervous about parking because, uh, you know, you would come back and your car may not be there. Yep. It's not even an exaggeration. Yeah. Uh, and so this was the public theater in the... 70s and early 80s right and you know certainly certainly up to that time and i myself when i first worked in like my first job was like in i don't remember uh 80s uh early 80s in uh like Flatiron, and there was nothing there i mean all the way around you'd go down to union square which was pretty much a needle park still and the whole area was there was nothing there There there's just no store there was no stores around Union Square. There was no farmer's market God. back then. Yeah, That's of a, course, I know. Do you oh. remember the kind of stores they were on 14th? I mean, some yeah, of them are still Street, there, but like, it was few. only that. Yeah, no, yeah. it was all mom and pop, little yeah. uh, independently crazy stores, the right shops all along 14th Street, all the yeah. way going east. As a matter of fact, I, having, I lived from 93 to 2000 on 15th Street, right by 3rd Avenue, between right. 3rd and Irving. And I lived there for many years, and uh, even the very first couple of years that I was there, it was it was really changing even down there. But at that point, the Palladium was still in operation around the corner on 14th right. Street. Didn't I didn't become a, a dorm there. there. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, wow. It all changed very, I know, very and it's very, it's it's one thing for us to reminisce about this or talk about it, but I think there's something very powerful about actually seeing it on film. Yeah. And like it's there, and it, it, it was. Is. It's not That's, just this historical are, right. distortion are, in our mind. No, no, it's. it's I'm sorry that, that I hear oh. that. That's okay. Oh, and no, no, I can get rid of a lot of that. Um, the yeah, no, you're right, and it it sort of serves as a a bit of a what would you call it an artifact or something. I don't know. Yeah. It's like it's yeah, it, really yeah. important. All the, but there were you know a lot of filmmakers right around that time coming out and making films all yep. on the streets. There were very like renegade filmmaking. Um, which is exciting and 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 Jarmish and Sarah Driver yeah. yes. were right in the in the thick of it, you know. Yeah. So, so how does that does that something that you think about or have thought about, like how you were kind of there in that uh, time, very seminal period of of independent filmmaking in New York, and not just independent filmmaking, a lot of other stuff too, f- right? Music, right. no, very much so. Art, um, mm-hmm. theater, performance, yeah, I think about that a lot. Well, actually, I didn't think about it that much because I took it for granted because I was a kid and I grew up in it and I thought that's what normal life is like. And then I realized it's not anymore. Mm -hmm. That's over. And um, I'm very, very, very fucking fortunate. You're grateful (laughs) for that experience. Really grateful. I mean, I I didn't... I just happened to be at the right time in the right place and um, part of this community. And I still to this day feel like that's my family that's my tribe that's my lineage you know mm, that's nice um i try so hard because i know a lot of people that listen to this podcast are young filmmakers or young like students coming out of school in new york and other places of course and and i know i don't want to be the one of those grumpy people I know. that that it talks about the good old days and focuses on that and because it's not fair and there will there is everybody will have those good old days you know um, it's it's hard in a city that has gone through such an astronomically and and quick economic change in such a short amount of time. Short meaning thirty years, but it, that is a short time because the thirty years before that, the change was 
it's incremental by comparison. Absolutely. And so, you know, now even just yesterday reading about how the Ziegfeld Theater is is, oh, no. is dead now, I'm is ending in the next month. Is that really definite? Yeah, it's all done. It's a fed up complete. How come? Another Hungarian term. Um, it's just too expensive to have a single screen theater of that size. It, and I'm sure it's it's dormant too many hours of the week and... Uh, I'm just guessing that they can make so much more money opening uh, whatever. You know, it's just, it's like everything else. Yeah. I don't, you know, they can put in, in that neighborhood, obviously, in the mid 50s on a. It's all about real estate and economics. It's just, really, it is. That's, that's really what it, what, what it is. So I guess. All over Manhattan. I mean. I'm sorry for people that, that. You know, look, uh, with that also, you're not, uh, it's much more difficult to get mugged in the city, but, um, you know. Yeah, there are some good things. Yeah. You know. But I wonder if that is now going on somewhere else where well, sure. economically it's feasible for that sort of community to yeah. exist. Right. Do you, where? Yeah. Well, I, you know, for instance, um, in a, and it's not like a great example, but uh, the, a couple of years, summers ago, I was at a, on a film shoot, um, and it was in this town of New London, uh, and which is, you know, one of many hundreds of downtowns all over the country, mm-hmm. uh, in small cities all over the country that have experienced uh, the economic bust of the downtown. Mm-hmm. So where all the stores, uh, you know, had to abandon. They couldn't even bring in big stores chain stores because there's just no money to be made so another right. big chain so right. these places went under and they lay abandoned and it still exists in a lot of small cities all over the place and and larger towns that have these these downtowns but what's happened like in new london is there maybe because of the proximity to new york a lot of uh, people after graduating couldn't afford brooklyn couldn't afford new york city and they right. moved to a city like it's a beautiful town with beautiful bones beautiful wow. like the buildings are just incredible and they were a beautiful little downtown, and and they were moving in to these spaces and opening up little shops. And so, I mean, that that's the hope. And I I do hear anecdotally around that in a number of these types of cities, that there has been a a bit of a um, I I hesitate to call it a boom, but I call it maybe a slow, hopeful renaissance of some uh-huh. of these downtowns because. Nice. Like you're saying, New York, yeah. I mean, is, is out, so many people are outpriced. You're graduating college and leaving, you know, um, SUNY or yeah. whatever your state. NYU, whatever, yeah. And even NYU, you're even particularly yeah. more yeah. Yeah. difficult affording anything because you're, you're... In debt for the rest of your life and your grandchildren's life. Right. right. Unless you become a filmmaker, in which case you'll be fine. Yeah, it's, very, it's, it's a challenge for me to stay positive walking around uh, anymore. You know, it, it's because um, it's just such a, a different place than I grew up in. But, you know, I, I, I you know, I try not to, to dwell on it too much. I Yeah, I've kind of made peace with it. I feel like it's probably projection, but I mm. feel that the walls are still breathing the memory of all that I right. lived and yes. knew. Yeah. And I've run into some people again who were there. And witnessed that thing, mm-hmm. so I know that I wasn't just imagining, imagining it. <laughs> so that's a really nice thing. Yeah. Um, and then just keep doing our work. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you? Uh, what else did you? Uh, I don't know. Take away from um, from that experience of making Stranger Than Paradise. Um, well, for me, it was so many things. I mean, good and bad. I mean, it was a huge life changing experience, really. Um, and in part because I was so young, so it was like really formative years for me. And suddenly people were asking for my autograph. You know, I never had anything like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, we actually had some pretty uh, accomplished people pass through our theater. So the idea of some form of glamour wasn't completely foreign to me, mm-hmm. but it was on a whole other level once yeah. the movie came out and became this giant success, which none of us expected anticipated no yeah i mean like you yourself said a lot of people in that scene were making weird experimental films or or not so experimental in this case i mean stranger than paradise isn't that experimental but um a lot it didn't look like very much if for the average moviegoer and i would have definitely put myself in that category at that time yeah coming into my 20s just then 
you know, being college age and stumbling into the theater, thinking I was going to another movie, by the way, and ended up in the theater watching Oh, that. really? Yeah. So it was accidental. And, That's even better. And and having stumbled into the theater, wondering why I was already, the credits were already over, so I didn't have the that to tell me I was in the mm-hmm. wrong theater. So I just sat there watching and falling deeper and deeper in love with something new to me. Cause I, That's I fantastic. Was, yeah. That's the best. And, um, and then just like feeling like I was pulled wide open, you know, yeah. like that all of a sudden I realized, oh my God, there are films like this. That's great. And uh, this is t- speaking directly to me. I felt that kind of experience. Uh, that's, that's so wonderful. You know? You know? I mean, I'm yeah. moved by that because that's... That's just a very authentic way that it that that it works. Yeah. It's not because it's supposed to, or you know. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, and I think every at that age, we all are seeking those types of experiences. You yeah. know, you're just coming into your own. You're yeah. leaving your parents' house. You're yeah. discovering the things that are brand new to you, and you're going to connect with these filmmakers or musicians or authors. You know, that are you know making something that talks directly to you you know that's what we you know so it's it, and it's so intense an experience <laughs> at that age you know? yes exactly i mean i still have that on some moments like i and i'm so so wonderful when that happens well that's what but, yeah you know that's why i do music because it has that yeah. sort of immediate visceral <laughs> thing that sure. i think you're talking about that's so intense at that age mm-hmm yeah, and I just uh, and it, it seemed there were a couple of other people, like in terms of film, because we're talking about film, like in that particular age, uh, time rather, that weren't doing that, uh, you know. So it was, it was and not a, all of it was brilliant, by the way. But the spirit, there was something about the spirit that was really free, yeah. playful, right? And and um, and I think what really helped that spirit is that there was a community. Yes. There was a right. community of like minds, and you were doing it for each other. So in a way, that's why I think Stranger was such a shock, because it hit outside our community. And mm-hmm. I don't know that anyone really expected that. Um, it just worked at the time, and something happened, and it, it reached far beyond. Uh, so that, yeah, that was a huge life-changing experience for me. And at first, it was fantastic. Like, wow, this is cool. And then hmm. there were moments when it wasn't so fantastic, like, you know, the day after you you realize that everyone's staring at you and asking for your autographs and recognizing you, and the day after you still have to figure out how to pay the rent and, yeah. you know, how to not feel insecure and all the real life shit that doesn't get solved by any of that. And that's a very, now we can laugh about that, but at 17, 18, however old I was, I think I was 17. That's pretty young to process all that. Yeah, very young. Yeah. yeah. Right. I can imagine, as you mentioned before, the, the, it just hit, it hit, it hit a, hit you a know, nerve. Hit a nerve, and it, it just took off. So not just to here in, the, in this country, but it's huge in Europe. And yeah. Probably in Asia, I'm guessing, because. Yep. I'm, I'm in just, Japan, Japan, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Japan, yeah. And, um, you know, so you, so you had, I mean, probably everybody, a lot of people were probably interested in schmoozing with uh, Jim and his yes. group, like, yes. you know, based on the success of the film. Absolutely. So you probably rubbed, re- what was, do you have a re- memory of a particular occasion just for fun gossip? If you um, remember, it like, wasn't always pleasant, that part of it. Right. No, I so understand. I don't know if I want to. Sure were... Oh, well, there must've been something like you met somebody who was, didn't, uh, didn't make you feel uncomfortable. No, no, no. I know. Or, um, or wasn't I met a lot of great people. No, I'm, I'm, I met a lot of great people. It was just, Uh, I think a lot of us just didn't know how to act with each other Mm -hmm. and, um, well, you know, like maybe, I don't know, Mel Brooks, (laughs) that's not a good example. I'm just joking. No, I'm making a joke, but there's so many opportunities where all of a sudden you're the flavor of the month in a sense, or, or, you know, I use that expression, but you know, you're playing it in Hollywood, the film, and you're showing up for the Q and A or something. Oh yeah, sure. Okay. I'll tell you an example. So the film was screened. One of the first places it it got invited to was the Rotterdam film festival. And I went, um, and, Interestingly enough, it was a little bit tense with me and Jim and Sarah. I think for them, too, the success thing was really new. Mm -hmm. And I think there was some kind of way that they weren't quite at ease with it. And so for me, it wasn't really a homey vibe with them. And I can say that now because we're totally good and Mm -hmm. 
and great, but that was a little bit. But I uh, became really good friends for a short while there during the festival with Jonathan Demi and his producer Gary, and they hung out with them a lot, and they were really fantastic. So that those were like really cool people. I. I met yeah. as a result of the film, and um, maybe I shouldn't have said that little thing about which part. The, oh, the awkwardness about. Um, oh, well, I think uh, was it diplomatic enough? I think it was very diplomatic. Yeah. Okay. I mean, goodness um, gracious! I mean, you can't have a deep, I, on, a lasting relationships without awkward or exactly. It was one of our periods of. That's right. That well said. Yeah. yeah. And and I think we've withstood the test of time and yeah. and all that but and and i totally blame it on more just like everybody was a little taken aback by the sudden success around that film and we we were suddenly pushed into outside our normal community comfort zone and mm-hmm. so it was like people were just finding their footing you know and i don't think it, with that yeah and i don't think a lot of people maybe young again people that are maybe a little younger today might not understand that so another reason why a film like stranger than paradise could have done as well as it did is because there there were lots of films coming out but it wasn't like today where there's like thousands of films every year there was many fewer films exactly. out and a film like strange of the paradise you know could actually play in a theater for months it was a big deal yeah why are there so many more films now well i'm sure there's a number of of reasons you, you if you listen to the podcast from episode one through the present episode <laughs> you'll, yeah. you'll, you'll you'll i'll learn, learn the answer <laughs> i will i'll do that that'll I'm be not my recommending project. that for no no but uh, i will say that uh, of course the digital age has made it i mean as a quick answer certainly the digital age has made it a lot easier for because equipment is so uh, yeah so so much inex- so much more inexpensive not shooting on yeah. film you just listen to the last episode with uh 86 for, or I think he's in his 80s, Manny Kirchheimer, who teaches at SVA, but he's also a filmmaker. And he, um, he, he you know, so, so pro-film because he's just like, he's in his 80s and he can still make films. And it's keeping him, I mean, he's so yeah. excited because he yeah. can make films and doesn't take it so much easier, you know. Yeah. Um, but, but there are a lot more. Right. And, so th- and, this and, is and, something I experienced with my music too. So that's why I was asking you because it's yes. such a, difficult thing in the music world as well right. well yes of course you know theft is uh, well theft is and, adds and a whole other dist- dimension and to the end of distribution but yeah but there's but the fact that there's so much more right yes in, right and, and well there's a democratization of yeah. that of, of of everything too on some level because of uh, everybody now can do it and they can distribute yeah. it it may not yeah. be through the biggest platform yeah. but they can do it you could create a website and play your music off your website yeah. and just go around and right. play nonstop if you you know yeah. want to and if you're able and 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 create your own following yeah. it's it just helps to do that when you're like 11 which exactly <laughs> because you're a lot more social media savvy and into all yeah. that and and you have years to yeah. put into it you know yeah. it's like but um you know anyway yeah so but there are probably a number of other reasons about about to answer that question why so many people are doing it uh, but yes, that's absolutely true that back then it was really a much different kind of phenomenon yeah. to have that breakthrough than it would be today. Yeah. Yeah. And we may be uh, approaching. Uh, that's not so bad. You have to get to. Um, my son comes home by himself. Oh, he does? And, uh, he oh, is good. not okay. even out of school yet. Okay. No, and I'm just, I just sure. You know, I'm good. I'm good. All right. Uh, Jonathan Demi, that's a good story. Well, I'm, I'm going to think he's of. He's one of my favorites, I mean, too. Yeah. He does so, a lot of documentaries himself. Right I now. have totally not been in touch with him in a million years, but that was a great example of something that yeah. came out directly out of that movie and um, other acting experiences. You know, I mean, that's that's a huge thing. Mm-hmm. I've, I got to be in other films and um, met some very cool people. And in some way, it really helped my, me launch my music thing when I got into it because I already had a story. Mm-hmm. And people love a story. In other ways, I felt like it was difficult for me personally with my music stuff because I felt like I had more to prove that I'm not just doing this mm-hmm. as a hobby or you know another yeah. actress sideline. sideline. Right, right. I, I was really doing it for real, and I felt like a little burdened with having to prove that, which was probably all in my head. Or but. So I'm saying it was a little bit of a blessing and a curse, but it definitely helped me in some ways. 
Uh, how, how, speaking of which, how do people find your music? So. Um, this latest record is very <clears throat> easy to find in any record store, iTunes, Amazon, all the usual outlets. Mm-hmm. I have great distributors who put it out there. So um, It's called Airless Midnight. Airless Midnight. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to get a copy. We'll play it so people might hear little great. I would love clips that. of it throughout the show. Thank well, you so much. I also did some music for the Louis show, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, he has a it's fantastic fun. way of, of scoring his show. Well, I mean, now I don't know what the story is, if that show is even still running, but um, he had a band just kind of score on the fly in a studio, really old school, mm-hmm. with real musicians, and mm-hmm. so he brought me in for a couple of sessions to, with, his, with his band, and it was great. That sounds like fun. Oh, It was I really fun. We'll have to watch the uh, that, that season again, or at least those, those yeah. episodes, too. You know, reacquaint myself. Well, thank you very much, and uh, we should do it again. You know. Yeah, I would love to. to. Maybe when I have something else going on, and sure. I'll send you my record. I'll. Oh, great! Be no, curious please do. To see what you think. I would love to. Yeah. Uh, Good. Actually, I'll give you one. Oh, now. even better. Yeah. Uh, and for those who, again, if you haven't seen Stranger Than Paradise in a while or at all, God forbid, um, you can. It's in the. It's part of the Criterion Collection, so you can see it i don't know how if it streams anywhere it may not i don't know um it does they bring it back periodically um there yeah there's always something or another a different Jarmusch uh, like, retrospective oh, sure, sure. Well, yeah. or a 20th anniversary or a 30th anniversary Ooh, the anniversaries the are an- going to keep coming up 30 years yeah. now. Mm. no <laughs> i i don't think we're there yet but we are yeah are we? it was again it was 80 i think it's uh, 84 Oh, yeah. So, Dang it. but <laughs> I know it's it's crazy, and of course, uh, as, as we said, Louis uh, um, uh, streams on Netflix, and uh, yes, you see it. Uh, is she's it on Netflix now? Yeah, yeah, that season. Yeah, all that the all four seasons, or I don't know if there's That's more. Great. But yeah, yeah. You watch can see season it. four. It's awesome. Yeah, it's a great. It's the whole great. season is great. Not just my, not just my arc, but yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Again, thanks. Thank you so much. <laughs>